we can now use our AI on any game. Hope you're ready, because on this episode of Tech Breakdown, we're bypassing anti-cheat. Before starting this adventure, we need to know a few things. I'll leave timestamps on screen as well as in the description below, although Foundations is recommended to truly understand what we are doing. Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Cheating is not condoned and this should not be used in online gaming. First, it is important to understand the state of cheating. The vast majority of cheaters today use software modifications and game memory in order to give themselves advantages against regular players. This has led anti-cheat companies to primarily focus on cheating at the application's level. Fortunately for us, computers have numerous protection rings. This is beyond the scope of the video, but as you can see, beneath the outermost applications layer is device drivers. This is where we will be going today. In doing this, we can circumvent anti-cheat entirely. Note that anti-cheat software is constantly evolving and deeper levels are currently being worked on all the way down to the kernel core. With that being said, the method we are using should work for the foreseeable future. Second, now that we know the architecture of the exploit, it is important to know the structure. Using hardware, we will be building a mouse emulator that will be registered by our computer the same way a regular mouse is, with the key difference being our ability to send commands to the mouse. In doing this, rather than the game seeing an application trying to send mouse commands to it, it sees a regular mouse being used and is none the wiser. Furthermore, we will be adding a host shield on top of this to allow us to use our everyday mouse and have it registered the same as our mouse emulator. This way, if a game company was to audit our activity, it would appear as a single mouse being used rather than two separate devices. Prerequisites for this video are an Arduino Leonardo, a USB host shield, a micro USB cable, a soldering iron, and rosin core solder. I'll leave affiliate links in the description of all the items I'm using. With that being said, let's get into it. Before we get started building, a quick note. It is crucial your solder is not acidic. I mentioned rosin core earlier because it is easy to work with and is meant for working on items like electronics. Acidic solder is corrosive and will ruin your equipment. Also, soldering may seem daunting, so I will leave additional links in the description for YouTube videos I found helpful for learning to solder. To get started, we need to heat our rig somewhere in the range of 660 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we are going to need to solder three areas, the 5 volts next to the V bus power and the 3.3 and 5 volts next to the ground. Once that is done, we insert our hose shield on top of our Leonardo. Make sure to line everything up before applying pressure. Now that that's done, we can move on to installing our dependencies. To get started, we're going to need the Arduino IDE. To install, we navigate to Arduino's website, select software, and install the version applicable for our setup. Once that is installed, we will need to install a third-party library in order to use our mouse with the USB host shield. To install, we navigate to the Tools tab and select Manage Libraries. When a window pops up, we type USB host shield and install the USB host shield library 2.0. Lastly, in order to use our mouse with the USB host shield, we will need to write a driver for it. But don't worry, I have done that for us. To install, we can either download directly from GitHub or clone the repo by typing git clone in the link to the repo. All commands and steps will be left in the description below. Now that everything is installed, it is time to plug in our Arduino. Insert the micro USB into the Leonardo and the other end into a USB port on your computer. Once done, open up the Arduino IDE. Select Tools, Boards, and Leonardo. Next, select Tools, Port, in the port of your Arduino Leonardo. Finally, select Open and navigate to where you downloaded the GitHub repo. Select the mouse.ino file. A message will pop up informing us our file has to be inside a sketch folder. Click OK and our script will appear. All that's left to do now is verify and upload. We can now plug our mouse into our host shield and it'll work as normal. 
Note, this video is strictly about bypassing anti-cheat and integrating electronics with our programs. I will not be covering the setup and creation of an AI aimbot, but don't worry, I have made a video specifically for that and I will leave in the description below. With all that said, we're ready for runtime. To get started, inside our terminal we will need to install Pi Serial. This will allow serial communication between our Arduino and Python. To install, type pip install Pi Serial. Next, we cd to our Leonardo GitHub repo. Now, there are two different Python files, movement testing and aimbot. Let's run movement testing. To do this, we type python movement testing dot pi. This program serves two purposes. One, to show us the serial port of our Arduino, and two, to test movement sensitivity in different games. Note that different game settings like mouse sensitivity will change how much our mouse input moves. Select your Arduino by entering the corresponding number with your serial port, then enter X and Y values. Note that positive numbers are associated with right movement for the X axis and upwards movements for the Y axis, and negative numbers are used for moving left and down. After verifying that this works, as well as testing the sensitivity in our game, we are ready to use aimbot. Note that I've intentionally made this aimbot script extremely basic, the purpose being to show how to integrate our mouse with our AI. This is not by any means a production level aimbot and will probably not hold up in competitive gaming. For more info on how this works, stick around for the breakdown segment. In order to use our aimbot, we copy the script to our YOLO v5 directory and run. Again, I have created a step-by-step -step tutorial on installing YOLO v5 and building an AI in the description below. Now, if we open up our game, we will get results similar to this. With that being said, we move on to our final segment, where we break down the code to better understand how all this works. To start off this breakdown, let's talk Arduino code. Arduino applications are written in C++, a popular programming language for writing applications that are close to the hardware level. In our mouse.ino file, we start with our includes and object instantiations. Includes is the C++ equivalent to Python's import statement. Here, we specify what external packages we want to bring into our script. Underneath our object instances, we have our global variables. These are global because they are defined outside any classes or methods. The value in global variables is the ability to use them in any and all methods in our program. Although, this should be done cautiously because global variables lead to the potential of problems at a global scope. As you can see, we have created an array that will hold two items, specifically our x and y axis move amounts. Underneath that, we have our negmax and posmax values. This is necessary because Arduino's mouse move function only takes signed char data types. In case you don't know what that means, signed char only takes values in the range of between approximately negative 127 and 127. We'll see this come into play in a minute. Note that the mouse parser class we are about to see, as well as the class functions, were taken directly from the Hoshield 2.0 library we installed earlier and have been modified for our specific purposes. Our mouse parser class is used for gathering info about our mouse. As you can see, for the class functions, we have a function for every bit of info we receive, like left button up, left button down, right button up, right button down, etc. I have modified these functions with global variables that change when the state of our mouse changes. Next, we have void setup. This is one of two functions in every Arduino application. Inside the setup function, we add everything we want our device to do on setup. This code will run only once. The mouse.begin starts our mouse emulator. The serial.begin starts our serial communication and sets the data rate in bits per second. Note that serial communication is the sending and receiving of data one bit at a time. It is sent synchronously, meaning one after another rather than in parallel. USB init initializes our USB and HID allows us to use our mouse with the Arduino. Void loop is the heart of our application. This is the second method in every Arduino code and runs constantly. As you can see, we use our global variables from earlier, creating commands to be executed when the state of the mouse changes. This is a logic used for our mouse. On the right, we have if serial.available statement. This says if any data is sent to our Arduino, run the following code. This code only gets executed when we send data to our Arduino through serial communication, in our case using PySerial in Python. 
we assign the incoming data to a string variable, then using a demarcation character like a colon, which is used in our Python scripts, we can assign our x-axis move amounts and y-axis move amounts to our delta array. Then we run the handle x and y functions. Note that the else statement below is used for moving our actual mouse if no serial input is being sent. The handle x and y functions are identical, so I will only walk through one. Because we can only move an amount of 127 positive or negative at a time, we must have this function. We start by passing through the move amount as a parameter. Then saying if the move amount is less than neg max, if you remember that was 127 or the max sign char value, then we want to divide the total amount we have to move by the total amount of moves it will take. All that is stored in our spawns variable. Next, we get the remainder of the move amount and assign it to the remainder variable. We then create a for loop and say for every time we need to move the max amount, we want to move the mouse the max amount. Then move the remainder. The else if after that says if it is inside the range of our neg max or pause max. In other words, if we can move the value being passed through in one move, just move the mouse that amount. Finally, we do the same thing as the first if statement, but in reverse for our positive values. Because I've explained the botting script in the aimbot AI breakdown, I will spend the rest of this video focusing on Pi Serial. This is what allows us to communicate from Python to Arduino. After importing Serial in list ports, we create a variable and call list serial tools list ports com ports. This will show us all available serial ports for communication. After figuring out which serial port is associated with your Arduino from the list given, we create our serial object. Note that our object takes multiple parameters, the name of the serial port, the baud rate, or bits of data transmitted per second, and a timeout value. There are many parameters we can pass to our object constructor. I'll leave a link in the description of PySerial's official documentation, but these are the most critical. Lastly, we have the write function. We can pass integers through our write function to be sent to our Arduino, which will then, using the demarcation we specified, separate the x and y values into separate variables. Also, the reason there is an X at the end is very important. While creating this script, I noticed if you just send code and use Arduino's read function and not read until, it will overload the system and cause the mouse not to move at all. Therefore, adding the X allows our program to take the data one send at a time. Lastly, the dot encode at the end is used to encode our data and make it readable by our Arduino. Now, if you made it this far, I want to congratulate you. In less than 15 minutes, we successfully bypassed decades of research and millions of dollars spent with a couple Hamiltons and an everyday mouse. Also, I'm going to be giving away this Leonardo and Host Shield loaded up with the code we used here to one lucky subscriber. So if you're interested, the only requirements are that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on GitHub, and let me know in the comments below what first made you interested in programming. This has been another episode of Tech Breakdown. I'm Trevor Satori, signing off.